So I'm gonna um, basically do a quick review of Scanner Danner's book. It's called Engine Performance Diagnostics, and this is the actual book itself. You can you can get the uh, it's pretty thick. I don't know exactly how many pages it is. Um, let me see. We got uh, Universal Testing Methods, first chapter. We got Switch Inputs. And if you don't know what Switch Inputs are, they're basically the inputs that go into the computer. For example, the crankshaft, camshaft, position sensor. It's just like a basically sensors, the, the, what the computer uses to uh, sense things. So you got switch inputs, all about that. Some case studies, also some uh, information. There's some uh, website. There's some stuff that goes to the... Uh, some links for his video that has to do with that particular case study or anything or whatever transistor driver and output solenoid so transistor driver for example a transistor driver you it would be like your ignition coil or your output solenoid you know like your uh, um let me see your uh What's some of the solenoids you have like for your uh, evap system your purge solenoid or your uh, I don't know I'm tired right now you know the other one the purge and the uh, I don't know I'm tired right now you know what I'm talking about the purge and the I don't know man whatever anyways oxygen sensors and field trim so this dives into the oxygen sensor testing and everything. And if you don't know, the sensor that's upstream on most modern day vehicles now, nowadays, they're not even oxygen sensors. They look like oxygen sensors, but they're air-fuel ratio sensors. And if you put the wrong sensor in the vehicle, it sets a code and you can't get rid of the code and you can't figure out the problem. And I made a video about that. Oh, I just remembered. Vent solenoid, vent solenoid and purge solenoid. I was talking about this right here, transistor drivers and output solenoids. Vent solenoid and uh, purge solenoid, that's the type of thing it's talking about right there. Oxygen sensor testing, so the previous chapter, actually, uh, no, it's the same one. Wait, oxygen sensor and field trim. For example, if you get a code for a lean condition, and uh, depending on the RPM, if the RPM's high, typically if the RPM's high and then you, you have a P0171 or whatever like that, it just kind of explains to you, basically, if it's a high revving, then it's probably a fuel issue. If it's, if it's low idling, then it's probably a, a, a vacuum leak. Oxygen sensor testing. Oxygen sensor and fuel trim. So it shows about how the oxygen sensor works and how to test it and everything else. Thermistors. If you don't know what a thermistor is, it's basically a, 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 a resistor that is controlled by uh, temperature, aka thermistor, like a thermometer with a resistor, thermistor. For example, a coolant temperature sensor or anything that measures any type of... Uh, Anything that measures any type of thermal change, whether that be your coolant temperature sensor or your, you know, even the, the, the sensor that shows you the outside air temperature. That's going to be like a thermistor, basically. Shows you how those work, how to test them. Potentiometers. Potentiometers, a potenti... A potentiometer is basically uh, like a throttle position sensor or an EVAP or no EGR. The EGR, when it moves up and down, it tells you the position of the EGR. Um, like I said, throttle position sensor, stuff like that. It shows you how to check it, how to test it, and everything like that. Pressure sensor, like a fuel tank pressure sensor or a... Um, manifold absolute pressure sensor stuff like that it's all the different types of sensors 
what else we got? We got uh, the 5 volt reference circuit. A lot of the sensors run off of a 5 volt reference. It shows how to check it, how it works, and everything like that. What else we got? Signal circuit integrity testing. How to test the integrity. When it says integrity, what it means is, is, a, is, a, is the wire broken? Is it uh, shorted? Is it, you know, whatever have you. Is it corroded? Is it uh, has too much resistance? How to check the re reference. Wait. My bad. This is a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> 5 volt reference. Yeah, that's all about the 5 volt reference. The signal circuit's a whole nother chapter. That's that's about... Um, that is about checking, like I said, the integrity, meaning is it open, is it broken, or whatever. Substituted values. Sometimes a computer will substitute values if it's lacking, for example, if it's if it doesn't have the camshaft position sensor or something like that, it's going to make its own values, and it's going to try to determine the camshaft position, even though it doesn't have information from the camshaft. Airflow sensors, vein airflow sensors, like the old uh, the old sensors that they used to use. Um, let me see. No, it wouldn't be intake error, like the mass airflow. I think the, I think mass airflow would be covered under this maybe airflow sensor. So that's another type of sensor, and that goes along. I mean, no matter what you're working on, it covers that. Let's see what else we got. Types of fuel injection it covers all the different types of fuel injection. There's there's two or three different types that he covers in here. How it works, how to test them, and everything like that. Field delivery design, there's different designs, there's multi-port fuel injection, there's single port fuel injection, there's uh, there's uh, what multi-port, single port, and then uh, most cars nowadays for every uh, intake runner you got, you know, you got, a, um, you got a fuel injector for every one of the intake runners, but some cars they just have one fuel injector for the, you know, throttle body injection or whatever, whatever have you. It just covers that type of stuff like that. Fuel pump electrical circuits. Um, on fuel pumps, you know, you can have all kinds of different uh, designs with, with fuel pumps and how they work. You know, uh, a lot of times you look at something that, look on a fuel rail, and you think it's a... Uh, you think it's one of those old school type of um, regulators or whatever, but it's not even a regulator. It's just a, it's a sensor that measures the pressure, and then it dumps it back into the fuel tank, covers that type of stuff. Fuel pressure testing shows you basically what it says. Fuel pressure testing, what it should be, what you're looking for, how to tap into it, stuff like that. Fuel injection driver design. There's different type of... Uh, injection designs and I think they're moving off towards one type of design which is like the, the the Japanese design fuel injection testing fuel injector testing so it kind of goes along with that previous chapter no injector pulse no start problems this kind of goes into more of the fueled manual type of deal right here it kind of goes into the what to look for for certain things idle speed controls idle speed controls now they're all controlled electronically nowadays usually because we got the drive-by wire and everything like that but it shows on the older ones how you have the uh, can't think of the sensor the, the 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 bypass controls and everything idle speed controls and some of them are heated up with the uh, you know coolant and everything nowadays Ignition system inputs, so the inputs, in other words, the stuff that's going into the computer, for the computer. No start, no spark. If you have a situation where your car doesn't start and it has no spark, it goes more into detail about that. If you have a no start, good spark, so you have a no starting car, but it, it you got spark, but it has, uh, and it has injector pulse. Then you're going to move on. You're going to move on to other things. EGR system problems. Which are predominantly in a lot of uh, 
GM vehicles and stuff like that. Actually, Ford vehicles also. I'm sure there's a lot of other vehicles out there that have all those other problems. Common terms and abbreviations. EGR system problem. Oh, sorry. So that's just common terms and abbreviations. So basically, uh, the reason I, I, I chose to purchase the actual book, the, the book with the paper right here, because I want something in my hands right here. Now, uh, so I want this in my hands. I can actually, if I wanted to, I, I could, uh, if I wanted to, you know, I can make copies of it or whatever for, because paper is not going to last forever. Or I could put this into, uh, you know, uh, plastic in order to keep it for longer. This paper ain't going to last forever. It's going to start turning yellow. It's going to start turning old. And this, this information in here, this is going to last more than, you know, 5, 10, 15 years because this is just general information. You know, it's it's not vehicle specific. It's it's a um, fundamentals. It's a fundamental. It's like fundamental of uh, psychology. If you know how one type of person works, you might know how another type of person works. So, anyways, I would definitely. I got the book because I didn't want to. If you get his online thing, it's basically like you don't really own it. To to be honest with you, because. Um, you can't basically print out the papers. You can't, if you don't have internet access, you can't get it or whatever. So I chose to get this. I would definitely recommend it to somebody who's any, any, uh, is really considering getting into the automotive field, reading it and taking your time and getting used to how these type of things work. Definitely something to look into. So, uh, if you're, if you're seriously into the automotive field, I'll definitely purchase this book if you get a chance to do it. I personally got this this right here because I can have it in my hands. I don't need internet access. If I'm going camping, I can read or anything like that. So anyways, I think it's something to, I think it's something to buy for sure. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe.